Yeah, so you need a you need a mix of technical and emotional skills. You need you need both in equal measure to be successful. Chris, you want to throw up the uh, next question, mate? All right, Stefan. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the Everton culture, what it needs to happen, and would you like to help? Well, yeah, cheers, Stefan. What was that, Chris? No, mate, no. First time anyone's ever asked me. Of course I'd like to help. An Evertonian, of course I would. Oh, mate, where to start? How long have I got? Um, this could literally be as long as the speech. Um, so I think, like, like as a football fan, you don't want to think about your club as a business, but... It is, right? And so, like everything that I've talked about uh, on the speech where, you know, organizations need to make sure they've got the right conditions so people can bring the best of themselves and do their jobs well and you all succeed, right? The same is exactly true of a football club. Um, but I think often uh, what happens is the club overlooks the kind of cultural side of things. Um, and you see this, you see this time and time again. Now, if you, if you take like the most successful club in my lifetime, right, which was which is Manchester United, is they brought Alex Ferguson in in the mid '80s, and they allowed him the opportunity to develop the culture that he needed to build a team to be successful. And then what the ownership did was they backed him with money and signings, but also with patience. And I think that's often. It's often lacking in, in football uh, these days. Um, but they, you know, kind of, they had both. They had a bit of a strategy of where they wanted to go, but, but they allowed Alex Ferguson to build the culture as well. And, and every, every single club, it doesn't matter whether you're Reynold Town, Prescott Cables, uh, Paris Saint-Germain, Red Bull Salzburg, um, or Everton, right? You need a strategy. Right, so you need what you need is your owners and your board of directors to kind of lay out what does the next three years look like. Kind of any longer than that, particularly for a football club, like any 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 longer than that, and you know you're kind of straying into that territory of it's too unknown. So you need that kind of three year strategy, um, and then the way that you deliver that strategy is through kind of what we call business as usual, exactly as I said at the start, right? The business as usual, the stuff you need to do day in, day out, and also some projects. What are the new things that you're going to do to achieve your strategy? And, you know, uh, my club, so Everton, if you don't know, I'm an Evertonian by now, uh, they're building a new stadium, right? That's one of the projects. And so that's one of the projects we're undertaking as part, part of this new ownership. We've had a new, new owner in place for a while. And look, if I'm being honest, he lacks patience. It's great. As, like, as, as a fan, it's great when you get new ownership and they have money. It's the thing that you clamor for. There's another club in England at the minute, Newcastle. They've just got a load of <clears throat> questionable money. Um, but they've got a load of money. And like, you know, as fans, we get excited about that. We do. Um, but we also want to know that there's a strategy but crucially, the thing that we connect with as fans is the culture. And, and often that's the piece that's missing. So the club, Everton at the minute, are undergoing a strategic review. That's great. But actually, they've got no structure at the top to help, help them make kind of the right decisions. So we've got an owner who's got most of the shares and he's kind of got rid of a load of people around him. He seems to be, he seems to be dipping his finger in a little bit too much for want of a better word, and um, not allowing people to really do their jobs. He's kind of surrounded himself with people who kind of get the culture, right? So our CEO, um, you know, from, from, from everything that I hear, you know, is kind of one of those real high performance CEOs. He's got a chairman who knows the club inside out, back to front, left to right. Um, and, and yet that can often cloud your judgment. And actually, you know, as a, as a fan, what I'd be looking for is kind of more maybe people from, from, from outside uh, who understand a little bit more, not only kind of strategically where we want to go to question some of the decisions, but also to make sure we build a culture like the owners brought in an ex-player on the board. And that's all right. Like, you know, it's, it's nice to see that representation, but he's, at the same time, he's also done away with kind of these annual meetings that we had to engage with, with, with supporters. So like any business, 
you know, to, to, to really establish a great culture at the club. What the club needs is to redefine its vision. So we have this strategy, right? Our three-year strategy, and part of that strategy, we'll have some goals. Here's some things that we want to achieve as a club. Like for Everton, like winning the league is not one of those things in the next three years. It just isn't. So what we should be looking to do is win a trophy, right? And that's one of the kind of lesser trophies, you know, like a League Cup or like an FA Cup, which got more prestige, uh, and qualify for Europe. Right, because that's where you get exposure, that's where you get a little bit more money, but crucially, you're able to attract better players, which is good for your culture and for your team. Um, and also, um, what it does, it, it, it kind of adds to the marketing potential that you have. So, that should be our goal, right? Like winning the league, maybe 10 years' time, that'd be awesome. As fans, what we want to see is that progression. That's what we want to see. We want to see that kind of every week, the players are kind of giving everything that they've got on a daily basis. Much like, much like you're expected to show for work every single day and give it your all. Like, if you just decided to bring 50% of yourself to work, your boss would be like, yeah, Stefan, what's going on here, mate? You know, why only why is only half of you here? Where's the other half? I go, oh, I'm a bit sluggish today. You know, I don't want to do my job. And that's kind of where the club is, or it has been. You know, we just appointed a new manager. We just signed a couple of pretty high profile players. So there's a good feeling around the club. There hasn't been a good feeling around the club for a while. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by Anna's comment. Well, listen, Rafa Benitez was never gonna work. Uh, and, and I don't mean the, the Liverpool thing, but he doesn't get the club, he doesn't get the culture. And he's too old fashioned, right? And what we've got, we've got a, a relatively young squad. We've got a lot of good young players who we really wanna keep hold of and we want those kids to commit to new contracts. And the way that they do that is they feel a sense of optimism in the culture. You know, it's a classic thing, right? I, jo I, I joked at a conference last week that when projects are failing, what we do is we bring in a middle-aged white bloke to shout at everything, shout at everyone, because we think that will change everything. That's kind of how I viewed Rafa Benitez. Just some surly old guy to be grumpy and put all the emphasis on his coaching team. Anyway, I got off topic there. Thanks, Anna, for distracting me. So there needs to be a vision. What does that look like for the next three years, right? And then kind of that lies at the heart of everything. And so not only are the board and the players excited about the vision, and the vision is different to the goals. The vision is like a short six-word statement about the word, where the club like is looking to get to in the next three years. Um, it gets, gets the fans excited too because we look at it and go, all right, there's a vision there. Not only that, we see that not just the owner's making the decisions because that's the dictatorship, right? Where the owner's saying, this is what we're going to do. And like he, he produced a letter publicly. And again, like I question the communication strategy of the club. I'm like, do you really think as fans, like we're looking at that and going, yeah, all right, sound that, yeah. Like, because we... we I'm not, I can't speak for all fans. I know there's one on the call. But uh, like when I read that, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, you're a private person. But you, then you do these public things on TV and then you take away some of the stuff where you actually engage with fans. And actually, you didn't let that guy over there, there was a director of football come on, so you didn't really let him do his job. You seem to make these scattergun decisions and like we, we just don't know what the vision is. Right, Everton is a club steeped in history, steeped in tradition. It's got strong values. Just fan, like fabulous work in the community. It does great work with ex-players, and and often it's held up as a bit of a gold standard for the work that it does off the pitch, but not on the pitch, right? Um, and so a manager's job. I just saw the question down there. So what's the manager's job? Well, the man, the manager's job. Like he's just one member of staff. Like everyone's got to bring it every day. It doesn't matter whether you're the manager, whether you're the chief financial officer whether you're selling tickets, whether you work in the in the merchandising stores, you've got to, like, you're like the outward face of the culture. So what you've got to do is you've, you've got to demonstrate that Everton means something to you, that you're, that you understand the vision, but you understand your role in it. The manager's no different. Um, and, and so with any culture, so it's the manager's job, right? The new manager guy called Frank Lampard. So the manager's job is to make sure all the players understand each other. Right, so you kind of understand how each other take, how each other work. So that personality stuff, we understand, you know, how different people like to receive in, in communication. Like for a manager, that's crucially important. That's that's for me why I wanted a younger manager, um, because what younger managers are able to bring, yeah, they've still got all of the tactical knowledge and the strategic intent. They just they they know that the world has changed. Like I started watching football in the nineteen seventies when my dad used to sit me on his knee in the Gladys Street stand. You know, back in the day when you could do that, 
you know, you can't do that anymore. Football has changed. There are still some people harking back to the good old days. It's not the way it works anymore. You need, what we want is kind of younger managers coming through. They understand that we live in a more emotional world. I talked about this at the start of the speech. So manager's job is to get close to the players. The previous manager didn't do that by all accounts, right? Get close to the players, build a relationship. Know which guys does he need to put his arm around the shoulder and constantly praise and reinforce. And, and you know, instead of giving criticism, like, here's one thing to think about. And yet there are other players, different personalities. You can be more direct and go, Alan, I want you to get the ball. I just want you to knock it. You know, I just want you to knock it. You know, Mason, stop passing the ball backwards. Right? Mate, you've got to go sideways or forward. You know, and, and, and different players require different communication skills. And I think what we want now within our cultures is, is, is ma- and this is outside football as well, we want managers who are hands-on. Like, we don't want a manager to be sat in an office and letting his coaching staff come on board. And that's the other thing about a manager, right? You want to put people around you who can help you achieve your vision. Right, you want you want people around you who buy into that vision and go, okay, cool. Right, well, I want winners, not win at all costs, because what I don't want to do is create these rifts with players that become public. The previous manager did that. You know, when we let people go, they either don't buy into the way that the manager wants to build the culture and wants to build the tactics and the way that we're going as a club, but also doesn't fit the kind of mold of the culture that we need to become. And so that includes how do we work together. You know, what are the things that we're doing? And remember cultures, I mentioned this at the start of the speech, cultures are made up of different subcultures. So it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter which part of the business that you're in, you still feel that sense of Everton. So from a playing staff, you have your goalkeepers who go away and do one thing, you have your defenders who go away and do another thing. Same with your attackers and your midfielders. They all, they all kind of split off and do their own training in different parts of the training facilities. The culture's still got to be there, right? And the coaches have got to live that. Everton are talking about... Uh, bring it in, they're either talking about it or they have done like a, a guy called Ashley Cole who's like a serial winner. They're people who I want on my coaching staff. Like, and then providing they've got the communication skills and then providing all of the coaches are working together, right? That's that collaboration piece. You know, we know how to pass the ball up, literally how to pass the ball up between defence and midfield. And we all know that we're going to play a possession game or that we're going to press. Sorry for the people who don't understand football. Slightly boring. It's going on way longer than I thought. Like, I've been waiting for someone to ask me this question for years. Like, as long as those guys know how to work together, then what you're going to see on the pitch is a cohesiveness. And then it's up to the players to bring the right attitude. Just like you as employees have to bring the right attitude every single day, right? So when the players get on the pitch, they've got to do all of the things that they've been doing at the weekend. And you know, as fans, we haven't been seeing that. Like, we'll forgive anybody a lack of quality. Like, and every player has had these kind of players who just don't have that level of quality. And we talk about them. They just do a job. Just do a job right? They come in, they're not the most technically gifted, they're not going to be on Barcelona or Real Madrid's kind of radar, they're just going to come in and do a job, you know, kind of the mid-90s, which was Everton's last, you know, kind of period of success, we had a guy called Joe Parkinson, right? He had a lot of injuries, but every time he came into the team, you knew you were going to get 100% from him, you knew he was going to do his job, you knew that he was going to follow it to a letter. You know, and I read something somewhere, it's like, oh, whatever it needs is 11 leaders on the park. We don't, we don't, we just not, we need whoever's job it is at that time to lead. We need that player to step up and it, it might be a midfield to step up or your defenders to step up. And you need a captain who's strong, who embodies the culture of the club, who feels what we feel as fans. He understands the history and the past where we've come from, right? So there's a nod to that. But also recognises what the future looks like and wants to be part of that. Now, with every great culture, with every great team, you're going to have your superstars. And what you then do as a, as a manager is you want to build a culture and, and, and those players, kind of the way that you keep hold of those players is build something that they can't get anywhere else. And so you read about these players who go on to bigger and better things, but they still talk about the time they spent at Everton or whichever team it was because they really felt the sense of the culture. We've got a great player, a guy called Richarlison, Brazilian guy. Like, there's no way he's staying at Everton. He's just too good. But the way that we get him to sign a two-year extension, 
right? It's by redefining the culture of the club such that it's fit for 2022, the Frank Lampard era and beyond, right? And then we start seeing an improvement. We start managing out the people who don't want to be part of the culture, right? And sure, there'll be people who aren't at the quality that they need to be, but they'll embody everything about the culture. They're the people that we keep around because we know when we put time and effort into kind of managing those players, they can get to where they want. You know, Lampard's job will be to inspire and motivate his players to kind of do great things and feel that sense of the vision. But we get Richarlison to sign a contract because the culture is awesome. Like, and then we've got that new project on the go, you know, and that's part of that strategy where we get to move into a stadium. Like, lad, why would you leave? You're going to play in this amazing stadium. Listen, we've just won the FA Cup and projected into the future like every year. I think we're going to win the FA Cup. Like, we just won the FA Cup. Why would you leave? You're still so young. You know, you've got another two years with us. You know, and you're constantly getting better and better and better and better because it's the culture that drives you forward. And so I guess rounding all of this. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, because, you know, innovation is a big part of culture. Is you're looking for new methods, new techniques. You're looking for ways to kind of track players' fitness and potential. And so you need a good scouting system. Again, your scouting system and your academy, all your kids coming through. They all know what it means to be part of the culture. And the culture just isn't like a badge put on the side. It isn't a banner on a stadium. It's like that's, that's part of the marketing of the club. But like I said, the culture is something that you feel. So when I'm watching a player on a rainy night in Belgium, I know what it feels to work forever. And I feel that sense of pride and commitment. Um, you know, and I'm looking for players who embody that. And I know that, you see, the, cult, the thing about culture, right, is it never stops evolving. It never stops growing. But if you don't stop and take the time to understand where you are right now, define where you need to go, get everybody involved such that they understand it. If you don't do that work, then it'll just, it will the culture will just stagnate. It will stagnate and we'll talk a good game, but on the pitch, we won't really see anything. Off the pitch, we won't really see anything. So this has gone on way longer than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, so so can the culture be fixed? Yeah, 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 yes, it can, Darius. The culture can totally be fixed. But in line with the strategic review the organisation are doing, they've got to do a cultural review. They've got to capture everything that embodies Everton. Then they've got to work with their playing staff, with their off-field staff, develop what that vision looks like for the next three years, talk about personality, communication, values, collaboration. How we're going to do all of this stuff. And then that point, what you've got is the foundation for all future success. Sorry about that, Chris. I went on a bit.